what advice do you have for leaders who want to be better storytellers uh, in their company uh, and their industry? Well, you know, the, the fodder uh, for great stories is usually already there. Um, so, so it's not so much subject to invention as it is, um, excavation, you know, really digging up, you know, how do we get here? What were some of our trials and tribulations in terms of doing so and what informed, you know, the process along the way. How often are you using your stories to lead your team? A great leadership story narrative can encourage others to follow and commit. Enter my interview with Rodney Williams, president and CEO of Belvedere Vodka, who knows what it takes to tell a great leadership story. And he delivers on that in today's interview. And what you'll discover is that you don't need fancy words. All you need is a good understanding of the core concepts of storytelling and some practical tips on how to develop your own narrative. And with these two things in place, anyone can become an effective storyteller and an effective leader. Uh, Belvedere is a very storied brand, as I as I understand it, right? It's it's a very old brand, um, and you sort of dove into the uh, this the storytelling piece of that. I guess sharing the history behind it. Uh, at least that's my impression. What advice do you have for leaders who want to be better storytellers uh, in their company uh, and their industry? Well, you know the the fodder. Uh, for great stories is usually already there. Mm. Um, so, so it's mm. not so much subject to invention as it is um, excavation. You know, really digging up, you know, how do we get here? What were some of our trials and tribulations in terms of doing so and what informed, you know, the mm. process along the way uh, um, such that, 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 that the product is what it is in 1993, the, the son of the real Dear Abby uh, was a, a, a serial American entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, when, the, when the Berlin Wall fell in 89, he went east thinking there has to be a super premium vodka out there that I could bring to America and the world. Uh, because at the time, vodka was... Um, pretty value-based in terms of, uh, in terms of category. So he went to a few dozen, um, uh, distilleries before he happened on, um, uh, the distillery in Girardov, uh, uh, Poland, about 45 minutes outside of Warsaw, mm -hmm. where, where Belvedere is produced and, um, and was nonplussed. I mean, it was state run. He was nonplussed about what he initially drank. And then he said, what's, what are these bottles in the, in the back room? And the employee said, this is the vodka that we make for ourselves. And he said, that's Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the oh, distillery, yeah. this distillery itself today, it's 111 years old. It's the oldest continuously operating vodka distillery in the world. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds incredible. And I love what you said about, it's not about, storytelling is not really about invention, especially when you got a good product. It's about excavation, right? Discovering, discovering the story there. And uh, it sounds like you guys, like the story was there, just kind of putting the pieces together and, and getting it out there. And I love the fact that, hey, yeah. <laughs> this is the good stuff that the people who work in the distillery actually keep for themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how, that's that's how it really began. And he really focused on the super mm. premium luxury sort of tier. Um, and Great Goose came along a couple years later, as have you know several other brands, and um, and, and and really established it. But yeah, I, I find the best storytelling is is authentic and, mm -hmm. and real. I can remember. I love when I have to present to a group starting out with a joke or something like. Mm -hmm. And I remember I, I had a presentation coming up. I asked the team, "Could you guys just send?" any kind of humorous antidote that you know I can work with you and the jokes they sent were horrible I mean, <laughs> they were so not funny so uh -huh. uh, so I, I then started just to think about you know what happens in real world uh day-to-day -day life that I could share that would be relevant and you know oftentimes it, that is the funniest thing yeah so what do you like to do you have an example of one that you opened up with that was maybe that came out of your everyday 
experience versus something you had to mine your team for? <laughs> well, I was telling you, you know, I love to start presentations with, you know, it's a humorous, humorous antidote and, you know, real life is funnier than, than anything else. So I, I would for a while tell the story about how I started at, at, at Moore Hennessy and started out working on the, on the Hennessy cognac business. And they had me go out to, to, to cognac my first week on, on the job. And, uh, and I looked at the itinerary and, you know, suit and tie every day. And I, I even called my boss. I said, uh, you know, Wednesday, we're in the vineyards. Uh, is it suit and tie? He said, suit and tie every day. I said, okay. So, you know, I'm coming from, from Sonoma and Napa where everything's casual. I have one really good suit, one pair of Prada shoes. And that was kind of my uniform. Mixed up the shirt and tie every day. And uh, so we're out there in, the, in this vineyard. Uh, well, we're about to go out to a vineyard, the, the, the Tuesday night. And um, the, the, the education head at Hennessy said, uh, you know, we will, we will be in the vineyards tomorrow and it, it will be uh, quite dusty. So uh, you should uh, make, take care not to wear your very best shoes. And he looked over at me because there were a group of about four or five of us. He, he said, those will do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and every God, time these are I my told best. Them, what? I know. I mean, it was like a dagger in the back. Every time <laughs> I told that joke to a French audience, they laughed like a little too hard. <laughs> like they Americans really don't get it. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was true. It was yeah. true. Thanks, Roddy, for yeah. sharing that one.